In a world where my Instagram DMs are filled with hate mail, nudes, emoji spamming, and credit card scams, I also get sent the same video of homemade Dippin' Dots 50 times a day. <laughs> but what is going on guys? Welcome back to another DIY. It has been so long since we've done one of these. These are some of my favorite videos to do. I think I gotta start doing more of them. It has been a while since I've been spammed something this much. The homemade Dippin' Dots. Why I'm getting suggested this so much, I really truly don't know. In fact, the whole recipe takes approximately nine seconds in the Instagram video. It's a very simple and straightforward, but it'll be good for clickbait. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Now because this recipe is so simple and short, and I want my video to be longer than three minutes, um, we're gonna do a little experimentation, see what gives us the best results. I'm gonna try this with three different types of frozen desserts. The sorbet, which they suggest doing in the video, some sherbet, and just some traditional ice cream. I got three drastically different colors, so we can easily track the results as we move along. And of course, for the rest of the ingredients, and I hope you guys are ready for this, this is a lot, some plain yogurt. That is it. You mix some yogurt and some sorbet, and you sprinkle dots and freeze them, and that's it. So, that, that's the channel now. But I do want to see if there's a better and cheaper option, because sorbet is quite expensive. This one little container was $6, so... As you can see though, step number one is to spoon out some of your different ice creams, um, melt them down in the microwave, and then add in some plain yogurt. I have no idea how much of each ingredient I'm supposed to be using here. By the looks of the video, it looks to be about a tablespoon, so that's what I'm gonna do. Once I had everything mixed in together, I began to prepare my water bottles. Supposedly, if you take any old plastic bottle and heat up something metal and make little holes in the top, you can squirt out some Dippin' Dot sized ice cream beads. I already have some very negative predictions <laughs> with this contraption, but I'm just gonna follow the video for now. I transferred all three of my batches to three different water bottles and onto some waxed paper. Yeah. As you and I and everybody else in the world watching this video guessed, this shit didn't work. Maybe some sherbet or some ice cream will come out a little bit better. Uh, no. Now there's a number of variables that could be causing this. Um, but the first thing I'm going to try is to pop them all in the freezer, maybe. Uh, that should thicken things up. And yeah, no. <laughs> that almost made it worse, to be honest. I do want to try adding a little bit more yogurt, because obviously, uh, at room temperature, yogurt is much thicker than melted ice cream. I also think I'm going to grab a new water bottle and make the hole a little bit smaller, so it doesn't pour out like a river. I think that's the main trick right there, keeping the cap as close to the paper as possible to limit splashing. I wish I had some exact measurements to tell you guys at home. I would say maybe three parts uh, sorbet or ice cream to one part yogurt. If yours was just splashing out like mine was, either you gotta add some more yogurts or just make the hole a little bit smaller in your cap. Also, to my surprise, all three of these froze pretty quickly, so let's give all of them a try. So here's our three experiments. First, the regular ice cream, which is green tea. Don't ask me why I got that. It's very random. I just kind of taste more of the yogurt than anything. Maybe because that's also like a mild ice cream flavor though. Now the sherbet. That's better actually. The, um, the orange flavor comes through more. And what the video suggested we use, which is sorbet. Also, why do they only sell raspberry and mango sorbet? Very strange. Yeah, that's the one. I think it's because a large part of sorbet is like a highly concentrated fruit puree. So like the fruit flavor cuts through the yogurt more. That's what we're gonna go with. Now the sorbet did win, but the flavors available in the store were very limited. 
So they only had two, raspberry, which we already tried, and some mango. I'm gonna follow the same process as I did before, three parts sorbet, one part yogurt, mix everything together. I also used a fine mesh strainer to get out any lumps of yogurt that weren't mixing down. And what you see here is about 20 to 25 minutes of dripping melted ice cream <laughs> on a cookie sheet. But eventually I powered through, filled up the entire sheet tray with my two flavors, and now it is time to give these a try. I'm not kidding you, I think it may have taken seven or eight minutes for me to plate this, uh, move my camera, readjust my lighting and stuff. This is what I'm working with here. I think we may have discovered the fastest melting substance known to human existence. Cheers everybody to yogurt soup. Also I popped this in the freezer for like five or six hours. Maybe that's not enough, maybe you gotta keep it overnight. I wish that worked though, because the flavor of this is really good. The yogurt gives it a really nice texture without like overpowering the flavor like it did with the ice cream and stuff. I don't know what to make of this. Is this a fail? I think so, right? <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed today's DIY. If you did, slap a like on this. Let me know what other DIYs you wanna see. Can only imagine what my Instagram DMs are gonna look like after this one. I hope you have an awesome beginning of your week. I will see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the AD Put the burgers in my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision